After Fortnite added a new shotgun, unvaulted the hunting rifle and bolt action sniper, players had to change their playstyle as well as their preferred loadout. What's up guys? If you're new here, we love dropping great tips, top 10s, and highlights on our channel. If you like the content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications by clicking or tapping that bell. Make sure to give this video a like and share it with friends. I'm Sam for Top Viral Gaming, and now, let's get into today's video. Today, we'll be taking a look at the best Fortnite loadouts and how to properly use them. For this list, we'll be taking into account game mode, playing style, and individual weapon strengths and weaknesses. Basic loadout, three weapons, two heals. Let's start with the most basic loadout you'll need this season. It consists of an AR, a shotgun, an SMG, and two healables of your choice. Compared to the previous season, Epic introduced some new tweaks to both the burst and normal AR, and you should consider these changes when choosing your AR. The first change is the headshot multiplier for all weapons has been reduced. The previously two times factor is now one and a half times, making headshot damage significantly lower. There's also been a reduction in the rounds fired by the burst. Previously it was three, but now it's two. Don't worry though, this decrease in round count was balanced out by the increase in damage. Now, what assault rifle should you choose? The clear winner, in my opinion, is the SCAR. Because of its high DPS and accuracy, it's still a meta in the new water-based map. Now, let's talk about the weapon that changed the most. The change that's affected everyone's playstyle? Yes, we're talking about the shotguns. You have to choose from having either a charged shotgun or a TAC. Both of these have their pros and cons. Let's take a look at the charged shotgun first. This is a new addition to Fortnite, and at first players were curious to know how to properly use the weapon to its max potential. With a bit of time, most of us have now mastered the charged shotgun and have found ways to use it effectively. Meanwhile, the tack has been nerfed. Now a headshot with a gold tack only does 125 damage. We recommend using the charged shotgun because the difference in damage between the two guns is significant. And a shot from the charged shotgun can be followed up with an SMG. With the start of Season 3, Epic brought back the Legendary and Epic variant of the submachine gun, and added Legendary and Epic variants to the Rapid Fire. Because of the difference in fire rate and reload time, if you have a charged shotgun with you, the Rapid Fire is the SMG to go with, as the charge would have done most of the damage. Keep in mind that this loadout can be used for both public matches and competitive games. Sniper loadout, 4 weapons, 1 heal, or 3 weapons, 2 heals. These two loadouts are for the snipers watching. This season has provided you guys with many amazing opportunities to put your sniping abilities to use, with the addition of the epic and legendary variant of the hunting rifle to public matches. To choose between which sniper to have with you is all up to which you feel better using. Most of the time, it would be both. In this case, it depends on if you're playing a normal public match or competitive one. If you're in a competitive match, unless you're rotating in zone, it's better to have a bolt action sniper rifle. This is because you'll be boxed up until you reach the moving zone, which opens up a lot of opportunities to get a nice elimination if a player is trying to laser someone else. It's recommended you switch your SMG out with the sniper. If it's competitive you're playing as, it's recommended that you have more heals for a better chance of survival. But if you're playing a public match for a high kill game, you can switch out one of your healables with the sniper, hoping one of the people you eliminate has the heals you need. It's a bit of a gamble, but this method pays off most of the time, and you can always find more heals while rotating into zone or searching a chest from an unlooted house. For public matches, you can take the hunting rifle, as there won't be many long-range fights. Rather, there will be more medium and close-range battles. If you're a trick shooter, the hunting rifle is definitely the choice for you. The epic and gold variant of the hunting rifle has very little bloom, that it can even be used instead of an AR if you're skilled enough. What do you think of these loadouts so far? Agree with us? Make sure to hit that like button to let us know. Comment down below with which loadouts you use and why you prefer them. While you're there, let us know what other kind of Fortnite videos you'd like to see. Now, let's look at the next loadout. Arena Loadout 1, two weapons, three heals. This loadout is specifically picked for arena and competitive Fortnite, but can be used in public matches as well. If you're someone who plays it safe and gets more placement points rather than kills, then this is the loadout for you. This loadout consists of only an AR and a shotgun. Just like in one of the previous loadouts, you'll be carrying the normal AR and a charged shotgun. If you're wondering if the AR will perform well as a follow-up to the shotgun, then the answer is simply yes. It definitely will. When playing with this loadout, you should try your best to use your AR as much as possible and weaken the enemy player before pushing them into a close range fight. If you're just starting out playing arena or daily cash cups and tournaments, this is a good loadout to learn and get experience with while playing competitively. It'll also make you more confident so you can eventually start playing more aggressively later on. You should also try to third party as many fights as possible 
but only from a distance so the enemy's focus doesn't turn on you. Try to pressure the enemy while they're healing, and always remember to disengage if you're not confident that you're going to win or you're too low on health. Arena Loadout 2, three weapons, two heals. This is the loadout we first touched on at the beginning of this video. If you're an aggressive player who's confident in their abilities and can W key efficiently, then use this loadout. When W keying, remember that taking height is not the only way to win a fight, as it may result in you and the opponent going all out into a big build fight, causing nearby players to come third party, and we all know how annoying that is. Try your best to avoid getting into build fights in the early game, as there is a big chance that a couple of other players may be near the area waiting for a fight to break out. Early and smart rotations are important as well. Before we go on, we want to thank you guys for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click or tap that bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, hit that like button. This lets us know that you want to see more content just like this. Rocket Launcher Loadout. Three weapons, two heals, or four weapons, one heal. Last but not the least, the one weapon we're sure each and every one of you love to use but hate having it used against you, the Rocket Launcher. The first loadout we're going to talk about using the Rocket Launcher will be focused more on arena and competitive games. Let's start by talking about how you can get a Rocket Launcher. You can get one from killing Marauders, but remember that not all groups of Marauders have a Rocket Launcher. Unfortunately, you can't get a Rocket Launcher from chests yet. If you're able to come across a group of Marauders who have a Rocket Launcher, make sure you seize this opportunity, because it will be very useful in smaller zones. You can use the Rocket Launcher in many ways, but here are the three most effective ways to use it. First is when the enemy is boxed up. Shoot the rocket at the box and immediately switch to your AR and break the wall. Keep in mind that you can also use a harpoon gun instead of an AR if you have it in your inventory. If done correctly, this would cause the rocket to go into the box and damage all the players inside. Then you can push them and get easy eliminations. The second way to effectively use the rocket launcher would be double rocketing. For this to work, you need a teammate who also has a rocket launcher. If you do, find a team that's boxed up and shoot the rockets at the same time. What this would do is one would hit the wall and destroy it, and before the enemy can replace that wall, the other rocket will go through and damage the team inside. And the third way you can use the rocket launcher effectively is by taking height in the moving zone and spam rockets from above. You'll be able to get a lot of eliminations using this tactic, as most players will be struggling to get into zone. Honorable mentions. Here are some of the most underrated yet important items to carry around in your inventory, if you come across them. Starting off with Pepper. This item, which you can find inside small boxes found in houses, allows a player to gain a speed boost both on land and in the water. This allows for a quick disengage from fights or easy rotation if you don't have a launch pad. Lately, you see a lot of pros using this in the moving zone and for early rotations in arena and cash cups. So the next time you come across a pepper, be sure to take it. Next up are the cabbages, found mainly outside houses and in Frenzy Farm. This item, which you can stack up to 15 at a time, allows you to heal up 10 HP in 3 seconds. The special thing about this is you can eat up to 3 cabbages in a second, which can get your health up very quickly. The best scenario to use this would be if you've taken some storm damage or after you box up while in a fight to heal up. We want to talk about stink bombs and how effective they are. You're almost certainly going to get a full stack of 6 stink bombs from eliminating a group of marauders, which is very helpful in getting easy eliminations when you're playing competitively. If you take height and throw stinks at an enemy who just came from the storm, it's almost likely that you get that elimination. Even if you don't, the enemy will be easy pickings, as they would be low. We believe a stink bomb is a very overpowered item to use, as it does 5 damage per second. One stink bomb itself may not do too much, but if you throw a couple, you're sure to make your enemy one shot for an easy kill. Another item which is very underrated would be the harpoon gun. As I mentioned before, it can be used to phase rockets into enemy boxes. But there are many other things you can do with this item most players never think about picking up. If you're playing with a teammate, getting enemy walls would be very easy if one holds down to take the wall and you use your harpoon to break it. You can also use the harpoon gun to pick up material and other weapons when they're inside the storm or you're simply too far away and they're out of reach. This is very useful in competitive Fortnite as you'd use a lot of materials to tunnel your way into the zone. The last item is the crash pad. It's the perfect item to use if you want to immediately get into an enemy's box as you cannot build in a place where a crash pad is or if you use it as a way of rotation. This can be used very effectively in arena when you're rotating in the moving zone. This helps you to save materials for the last fights as well. Remember, at the end of the day, all this comes down to personal preference and what would be easier for you. Always try out new weapons and see what works best. Agree or disagree with our picks? Let us know in the comments down below. Check out our other videos. Be sure to subscribe and turn on that bell to be notified about our latest videos.